Hokey dokey. Second example for this problem, if you'd like more of a breakdown or just more information about this problem, feel free to check out the other example I've worked out. I'll try to do this one a little bit faster, but I'll also include some important information in this one that I might have left out in the first one. Let's keep going, though. So um, we're finding the greatest rate of change of the population given this chart. So the first thing is because we're finding only the most positive slope or rate of change, we can eliminate, uh, we can save ourselves from not finding the slope between any p-values or any t-values that have a decrease in the p-value. So in other words, from here to here, there's a decrease in the p-value, so we're not going to find the slope between those two points, right? So then from here to here, there's a decrease in the p-value, so we do not need to find the slope between these two points. So we're ignoring these. However, from 2.9 to 3.08, there is an increase. So we might have to find the slope between these two points. From 3.08 to 4.56, there is an increase. So we will have to find the slope between those two. And then all the way through, we have increase from 4.5 to 6.3. And then another increase from 6.34 to 6. 0.88. So we're finding four slopes between four different pairs of values for this one. So very tedious, but let's not waste any time. Let's start by finding the slopes between the slope between the uh, first two points here by using slope formula. It's basically y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but sort of in the context of the chart here. So we're doing the setups here. We have 3.08 minus 2.9, change in p-values, divided by the change in t-values. So we'll have that. And I'll go ahead and set up all these slope equations before I calculate them. And I'll just start at that one backwards. Forgive me. We have 4.56 minus 3.08 all divided by 7.2 minus 5.5. And then the slope between 7.2 and 8.9, we have 6.34 minus 4.56, all divided by 8.9 minus 7.2. And then the very last one between 8.9 and 10. So we have 6.88 minus 6.34, divided by 10 minus 8.9. So I'm just going to use my phone calculator for this one, just because it's faster. Um, you can use, you know, Desmos. In the past, I usually used, I would usually use Desmos, but for time's sake, I would just use my phone. So uh, up top, we get 0.18 divided by 0.8. And that'll give us approximately... I'll use a different color for these. We'll get about 0 0.225 for the first one. For the second one, we have 4.56 minus 3.08. That gives us 1.48, and we're dividing that by, let's see, that's 1.7. So 1.7, and that gives us 0.87. All right. Uh, and then for the third one, we have 6.34 minus 4.56. That gives us 1.78. We're dividing that by 1.7 again, it looks like. So we get 1.05 once we round. So far, so good. 6.88 minus 6.34, 0. 0.54. And then we're dividing that by 1.1. And that gives us about... 0.49. So looking at these values, we are looking for the most positive, the highest positive value. So that would be 1.05, which we do see an answer for. So we break out the eraser and we do see that D is our answer.